Well, hello there again. Yes, this is gonna be a sort of unboxing and pretty much an upgraded video to my uh, current um, generator. Now, I bought this one, it's new. Um, I bought it secondhand because, well, some folks were thinking, hey, we're gonna go camping, we need a better um, generator. But in the end, they did not use it, so it's still inside its box. Hasn't been opened, uh, only they only had a look inside and put some new tape on the top. But more than that, it has not been used, it's completely new, and so, well, what's different between this generator and the one I currently have, the cheapo Einhell crappy one which you can get at Harbor Freights or stores like that for 90 bucks if you have a special coupon or so. So, this here is the Matrix DG DPG-1000, and this is an inverter um, generator. That means it uses an inverter to generate the 230 volts that are necessary uh, to operate. And, well, to operate your uh, current devices. And you also have a um, 12 volt DC output, presumably to charge batteries or... I don't know. Not too sure about the um, 12 volt uh, port on there. I'm just inter interested in the 230 volts. Because, well, same story, I'm going camping and I'm not sure if everywhere I go I have power. So that's why the generator. So that if, in a worst case scenario, we still have electricity for a couple of hours and so on and so forth. And because, well, you can see that it immediately throws in your eyes that this and use inverter technology, you can use it for TVs, microwaves, laptops and pretty much any stuff that uses a switching power supply. And yeah, it's it's pretty much ex almost the same um, generator, but the difference really is that inverter and uh, the power output is still exactly it's the same, 850 watts. It can do a, a peak of 900 watts, but uh, or even to a thousand, but only for a very short amount of time. So yeah. So well, let's open it up and have a look inside. And inside the box we have the handle with its screws that needs to be screwed on. We have a 12 volt power cord which we can use to charge batteries. And we have a screwdriver that can be a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver depending on what you need it for. Also we have a small plastic bottle which has some lines on the side as a measuring bottle. This serves to help us mix the fuel to oil ratio in the desired um, mixture, which in this generator is 50 to 1. Alright, tighten those screws good uh, tightly down. Not too tight, otherwise they'll break. And yeah, let's get all the stuff out of the way. And take out the generator itself. And here we are. First of all, here are some um, warnings you have to uh, read. Uh, always, if you're gonna use a device like this, it's better if you actually read this stuff so you know what to do exactly. And there's just another thing we have to do. If we take a look at the spark plug, well, there's the spark plug. This thing still needs to be attached to it. Oh, cool Ziploc ties. How very convenient. Alright, on some spark plugs you have to remove this piece in order that this thing will fit, but judging from the size of the hole in here, uh, it looks like it can stay on. It's only going to be a bit difficult to get that thing on there properly. And I just noticed something. This is a bit of a fail because there's plastic in the way for this thing to go on to, so... That's the reason why I'm having some issues. So you have to somehow bend it around there because otherwise you are not going to get this thing on properly. And after that, yeah, press it tightly and it should hold nice and tightly on there. So well, then let's have a quick overview of the device itself. On the top, of course, we have our uh, tank that uh, holds, um, so far as I know, two liters. It's not the biggest, it's not the smallest, but you can run quite some time with it. And if you lift this thing up, there is the valve for the uh, fuel. And it seems they actually used very proper uh, fuel tubing, which sometimes they don't and the whole thing just starts to break and you have fuel everywhere, which is not nice. Uh, then we have here our kickstart, which you just pretty much 
pull to stop the thing. Seems pretty enough. So well, this screw is pretty much just an adjustment for uh, power. So what that means is that if you have a device that only requires like 500 watts, you can adjust the generator to only generate 500 watts. So this screw is pretty much just like a uh, sort of potentiometer to save gasoline. That's all it is, other than that you can take this thing off. I'm gonna leave it on there for now, but yeah. Let's have a look at the front. So well, this looks pretty nice already. We have our all of the uh, important values here. If you want to have a look at those closely, there you go. And next to that we have a small voltmeter, just a very simple one that shows us how many volts we are currently having on the output. And we should have something around 220 to 240 volts if it's adjusted properly. Below this we have the choke, we have the air filter and we have a uh, sticker on how to uh, maintain that. And that should be very easy because there's just one screw on the side here, there, that you have to remove and then the whole thing will just pop off like so. And what do we have under here? Well definitely our power socket which interestingly even is uh, secured so that kids can poke their fingers or whatever in there. You have to need, you need something with two prongs, otherwise you will not be able to put anything in here. Here is where it gets interesting. We have our 12 volts DC output here and the engine switch to start it and stop it. Now it just means that if you put it on, you can actually make the engine turn over, put it off and the engine will stall. Uh, this is just the cover where the um, engine is below, and down here we have a uh, connection to ground. Now, you're going to need that if you want to make things secure, and, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, this here is a resettable fuse, but it seems that the rubber cover here is missing. But, yeah, I'm not gonna have this thing standing outside in the rain or so, since that is a stupid idea anyways, so, yeah. And this is our muffler. Supposedly this thing should be a lot quieter than the previous one, but judging from the sticker on the top, it says 95 decibels, so it, it will be about the same. And let's have a quick look underneath the unit, just so we can see some stuff that's inside, if we actually have access to that. And well, we cannot see an awful lot. We can definitely tell we have our motor here. Um, there's the combustion chamber and the exhaust pipe. And this is something that you really need to look out for. This is the um, carburetor. And uh, what I would highly recommend doing is, if you're gonna put this thing away for a couple of months or so, or if you have used it and now stopped using it because your event is over, drain this carburetor and leave the screw open. So all the gasoline that's inside here can get out and you will be able to start it the next time we're going to use it by the first try because no oil is going to go and stick everything up in there, which is always quite awful. And if we look in deeper in here, we can see our uh, generator inside here, this big coily thing, and down there we have our inverter with the big heat sink. So yeah, this is definitely quite an improvement to what the other one was. And also it's a fair bit smaller seems to be more compact. The weight is 14 kilograms. That's acceptable. So you can take that pretty much anywhere. It's not gonna crowd anything up. Only it's gonna make it's gonna stink a bit when you're gonna use it because of course it's an engine and gasoline and oil, all that stuff. Yeah. And of course, since it's a two-stroke engine, always make sure you're carrying one of these with you. Two-stroke engine oil. And with all that, you should be ready to go. All you need now is gasoline, know how much liters you put in there, put the proper amount of oil on it, mix it up a bit by just shaking the whole thing, and you're done. Then you can use it. And don't have to worry about this thing blowing up your power supplies, since... I'm not sure if I still have that footage, but I have the footage of the old generator blowing up an Xbox power supply. Which, yeah, ended in quite an impressive smoke show. Next time I'm going to actually power this thing up 
make it run and we're gonna have a look at the output and if it really does what it claims. No, of course I'm pretty sure a lot of people are dying to know how exactly that uh, inverter system really works. So I took the uh, front panel off since well I don't have any warranty for this so it really doesn't matter. So what do we have here? This here is our inverter and uh, yeah it does appear to be in a uh, decent size to handle uh, that amount of power and I mean there is a bit of airflow inside the whole unit so there's no worries with that uh, heatsink there but yeah, you know, I think it should do the business since I'm not really going to use all 800 watts this thing is capable of producing so yeah and these capacitors are made by Capcon which I don't know if that is good or not but yeah again it's gonna do the business for what I have planned to do with it. Interestingly the carburetor is pretty much the same uh, as in the other one only the real difference is that the uh, tank in the bottom is a little bit bigger this unit here and uh, the uh, structure is shaped a bit different so yeah and uh, this uh, adjustment screw um, the old generator that I had also had that but um, it was pretty much just a screw there was nothing uh, pointing out to what this thing actually is and that is just something that tensions the uh, spring on here telling it how far it can go back oh. That there is very close to touching the motor, but luckily it only moves this way, so no worries there. And one thing that I'm not a very big fan of, you, if to take the front panel off you have to actually take the entire carburetor off the unit. But uh, it's definitely built a lot better than the other one, since you can just twist the uh, whole thing now without removing this uh, piece. What was the reason why I broke that insulation down there and I had to use a milk carton you know these tetra pack things uh, to actually <laughs> repair it since I could not find a replacement but yeah this thing is definitely gonna do the business uh, interestingly it seems like we have uh, two sources uh, going out and uh, yeah I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, yes, it seems like we have uh, 12 volts going this way, 12 volts going that way, or well, that could also just be the um, circuitry to uh, do the uh, sparks for the spark plug, of course. But yeah, other than that, yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same thing, only that the um, generator itself, which is inside of here, is 12 volts. That then gets boosted with some magic up to 230 volts at 50 hertz. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a pure sine wave generator, but uh, again, it, it should work for what I've planned to do with it. And since this thing is now a lot safer, and yes, of course, everything is properly grounded. So, yeah. Simple construction, pretty much exactly the same construction only utilized a, a lot more intelligent with this so this is definitely the best thing you can do or you can get if you want a uh, affordable generator not a big fan of the epoxy spilling on the heatsink but yeah, it should be okay and it's just a very thin layer so hmm. could have done that a little bit better but yeah it's it's gonna work there's only one problem. Uh, if you want to use this 12 volt prong, it's not gonna go in there. Yes, I have it the correct way, and it's just I can't get it in deeper than this. It needs so much force to go in there, and I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong, it doesn't seem so, but yeah, this is my only real complaint.
as you've seen, it runs very nicely. And uh, what I've done now is I've just pretty much let it run, closed the fuel valve, and let it run the carburetor empty. Then I tried to open up the carburetor screw. Um, I said I'm trying to open that screw. I, I can't get to it. Really good. I mean, I can't, but. Yeah, <laughs> I can't turn it. The problem is that, as you can probably tell, um, there's sort of an angle on here. And that is bad for the screwdriver and the screw, of course, because if this thing is actually tightened up at the moment it's open now. But, um, yeah, you can't really turn that screw. So what I'm gonna do is uh, rotate that a bit. Now, that is also something that is very, very easy to do. And I hope I can lay the whole thing down because, as you can probably hear, there is gasoline already inside of it. Alright, and to illustrate that issue, what I'm talking about, a bit easier is uh, if we take the thing to the side. So let's say I have used this device and I want to put it back in storage, which is pretty much exactly what I did now because I'm only going to use it maybe next week since. I'm not sure if we're going to have power, and if we don't, this is going to help out a lot. Um, yeah, that sucks. I mean, sure, I, I can somehow manage to turn the screw, but by doing that, I also damage the screw. And that's something that I really don't want to do. So what do we do now is we take our ratchet, and we loosen the screw to remove the... bottom of the carburetor. Then we rotate the cylinder a bit to the side so that we ha have an angle and make sure that our screwdriver can go in here without knocking against anything, which is it right now. And then just tighten the screw up by hand a bit and tighten it back up again. Don't go too tight on this because otherwise you're going to damage the seals that are inside but make sure that it's tight, but just not too much. So, well, yeah, that is pretty much it. Nothing more to do. And if we have a look from the side, like so, you'll be able to see that I can now shove the screwdriver in here, put it exactly in the dead center on the screw, and it does not knock against anything. I have quite a fair bit of room. And what I always do is when I put this thing in storage, I leave that screw open. Only thing you've got to remember that because otherwise the next time you're actually going to refuel this, the gasoline is going to drip out of the bottom. 